Today I want to talk to you about the box that you've received or the one that you're going to be getting and it looks like this. And there's a whole bunch of contents in there but specifically let's start with the, the uh, bag that has seeds in it. So in your box among the other things you're going to have something that looks like this and there is some seeds in here that are from the wheat family. This is wheat seeds and they call them wheat berries but this is wheat. This is white Sonora wheat. This is a special wheat that is was grown here in the southwestern United States. It was brought here in the 1600 to the Americas. The Native Americans started growing this around the 1700s and then it became a crop up through about 1950 and then it totally disappeared around 1975 and was brought back in around 2012. So this is a heritage plant. Um, it means it was handed down uh, family to family, generation to generation to grow uh, wheat. So this is white Sonora wheat and this is the berries that, uh, that come from it. These berries come from this. This is what the wheat looks like when it's grown up and it's mature and it's in the crops. I grew this in a school garden and this is the same kind of wheat. It's called white Sonora wheat. So this particular piece, if you look at some grass sometime, um, grass looks a lot like this when you see it. But wheat is from the grass family and wheat is a grain. So taking this uh, spikelet is what they call these. And if I take this and I smash it up with my fingers, I'm going to sort of take the hull off of it and I'll come up with the wheat berries that are in your seed packet. These are heirloom, these are heritage seeds and that's what they look like. So what I wanted to show you is what happens with these things. So in taking these wheat berries, I'm going to put them in this mill or a little stone grinder and I'm going to smash them with this rock. So um, this is called milling, but in the commercial area they've got fancy millstone machines that do this, but I'm just going to do it right here. So now I've smashed it up, the wheat berries, and this is what it looks like. This is in essence flour. It's whole wheat flour. It's made from those berries and that is what you may have in your pantry at home. It's going to look like a bag like this in the pantry that your mom or dad have or it'll look like this. We got these seeds from Hayden Flour Mills which is local here in the valley and um, this is their flour and that's what that looks like. So now this is what you've got in your bag of these seeds, wheat flour um, and wheat seeds and now we're going to talk about what you eat with these things. We've made flour now from the wheat seeds and I showed you how that's done but I want to just kind of introduce you to some of the things you might have been eating that come from wheat. So take a look here and you'll see noodles, cereal, cake, here's a waffle which you also have pancakes, there's cookies, there is crackers and there's a tortilla in here. All of these things you may have eaten and they're all made from wheat. So that's what you could have been consuming lately. Let's take a look at how you grow the wheat now. Okay, let's talk about what you do with your seeds and how you get them planted. So in your box, remember you have the bag of seeds that look like this and you've got a container to plant in and you've got a bag of soil that's in there as well. So what you can do is take your soil Put it in your plant container and be sure you do this outside or you get mom and dad to give you a hand with this thing because you may spill it and of course it might make a mess. You can pretty much almost fill it up to the top and then take your seeds that you got and you've got a lot of them in there. So go ahead and take the seeds and just drop them around the top of the soil. And then after you get the seeds on top, you just have to push them down with your finger. So just push on the seeds so they're covered, just maybe about half an inch or an inch if you know how far that is. So now you've got your seeds planted. 
Uh, you need to wet these or water them now. The water tells the seed it's time to grow. So you're going to water this. I would put it under a little dish or something to hold the water so it doesn't go onto the table or run off into anything else. If you do have a raised garden at home, you can just plant these seeds directly in your raised garden and then just make sure you keep them wet. Once they start coming up, there's going to be a straight shoot. It's just grass. So you'll see a straight shoot that's going to be coming up. When it's growing or grown, you can either take it back to your school if they'll let you do that and put it in the garden or plant it outside someplace. But you'll get to see the wheat seeds growing and hopefully you'll have a nice little crop of wheat. Hi guys, uh, my name is Carlos Diaz. I'm an executive chef at Gallo Blanco and Otro Cafe. So we're here on uh, Chef in the Garden series and you know, wheat is the main ingredient this time. So I'm gonna show you guys how to make flour tortillas. So um, in your box, you're gonna have a bag of flour, which is uh, flour, salt and baking powder already in the mix. Uh, we're gonna have a Crisco, like vegetable uh, churning, and we're gonna have uh, canola oil, and also a plain flour to prevent your tortilla stick and your uh, rolling pin or your table. So this ingredients is gonna be in your box. So um, you're gonna beat a little bit of warm water. So um, just, you know, with the help of your parents, make sure you have uh, warm water about 110, 150 degrees. So make sure you ask your dad for help or your mom. Uh, so we're gonna start uh, with uh, the flour. You can use a mixing bowl in your house. Uh, and then the first thing that you're gonna throw in is gonna be the Crisco. And uh, so you don't, everything is measuring for you guys already. Uh, we do the uh, oil and then once you throw the oil and uh, the Crisco in the mix, you're going to fill it out this completely to the top with hot water. So you're going to throw the water into the mix. And then you're gonna mix it really well. It's gonna be about two to three minutes. Uh, make sure you wash your hands before you do this. And um, after you mix it really well, you're gonna let it rest for about five minutes. Um, so you want kind of like uh, pigs a duck consistent. It's gonna be a little bit, you know, soft, not too hard, but you need to make sure you mix it really, really, really well. So after you have your uh, dog ready, you need to let it rest uh, for about five minutes. So in the back, when you have the flour, uh, you can put it in into the plastic bag and let it rest. So we use plastic uh, so we prevent that uh, your dog for the tortillas get dry. So after you let it rest your uh, tortilla mix, um, this is really important step that you're gonna need your dad or mom help. You need to uh, get uh, the coma ready. So coma technically it's uh, uh, kind of like skillet. You get to put it in a medium uh, high, but remember, uh, you need to ask your mom or dad for help on that step, okay? Um, so after the mix rests, you're gonna grab and you're gonna make about ounce and a half uh, tortilla bowl. Um, you're gonna like roll it out a little bit. And uh, you're gonna put a little bit of flour. You're gonna put your tortilla bowl, more flour on top. And you're gonna stretch it out a little bit, kind of like, are you guys ever made pizza before? You know, pizza made with flour too. So you're gonna stretch it out a little bit. So once you have like a, about two and a half inch 
uh, uh, circle, you're going to add a little bit more flour, and you're going to need a rolling pin to stretch it out your tortilla. Make sure when you press it, you have to put pressure on both sides evenly. And you need to turn your tortilla around so that way you have a round tortilla, no oval tortilla. So that step is really important. So you stretch it out, one side, you flip your tortilla, add a little bit more flour, and you're gonna do this about probably four or five times on each side until you get about six, five and a half inch tortilla so that way your tortilla is not too thick and uh, cook more evenly on the plancha. After you um, stretch your tortilla about four and a half inch, uh, make sure you ask your parents for help on this step because it's, uh, you know, it is hot, so I don't want you guys to burn your fingers. Um, so we're gonna uh, lay down the tortilla on the comal. This step is really, really quick. We're gonna cook the tortilla about 10, to 12 seconds on each size and um, so if you can flip it up with your fingers uh, make sure your parents or you use a spatula okay um, so we're gonna lay down the tortilla on the comal and uh, we're gonna wait uh, as I say about 10 seconds on each side so this process is super quick um, so what they do, and that's why the comal have to be on a medium, uh, high temperature. So you want a caramelization on, on the tortilla. So, you know, the flour can get more flavor. There you go. And then you see all these browns on your tortilla. That's all the flavor. Make sure you got some carne asada or vegetables from your garden to eat this tortilla. Okay. And there we go, easy and simple. Thank you guys for watching this video. Um, I hope you enjoy uh, making tortillas and uh, spend some time together with your parents, you know, making these uh, awesome tortillas and I hope you enjoy it.